Hi everyone, today we'll be going over an example of designing a retaining wall using the uh, owl type cantilever retaining wall. So let's go over and open up this template. The retaining wall we'll be designing uh, has a differential soil height of 1500 millimeters. Um, we'll assume that the water table is low and does not need to be considered. We'll assume that the soil that's dug it out is used for backfill and that there's a 4.8 kPa of live load surcharge. So let's head down. Um, since the water table is not considered, we can set that as zero uh, or we can just zero the unit weight of water. Um, and then the live load surcharge we set as 4.8 kPa. And And that's what we have to note for this geometry. Oh, and then we want to set actually the height, the differential height between the soil and uh, the higher end of the, the backfill on the higher side of the retaining wall and then the differential height between that and the lower side. So the height of retained soil is said 1500. Um, plus the cover. So the soil is two meters and the soil is uh, half a meter. So that differential height is 1500. Um, and then we can say that actually the stem also only needs to be that height. Uh, and then we'll come back and set the thickness and the thickness of the, the heel and uh, base, as well as uh, the length of the base, um, once we've considered our, our soil parameters and, and are looking to optimize. Um, so we'll, let's stick with the recommended values of our retained soil properties and assume that it's gravel and, and dense, that it's controlled fill because um, we have the ability to, to compact it and control what, what goes in the backfill. Um, and then our retaining wall movement is, is active class A. Uh, let's use the rank time method and not consider uh, not consider dynamic movement. The base soil properties, we're also going to keep uh, the same. Uh, this is uncontrolled fill as we don't, uh, as it's undisturbed soil and, and actually we don't know what type of soil it is. Well, we don't, we don't have, uh, we don't go in and compact it or modify it um, because it's, it's the soil that's under our retaining wall. Uh, and then let's set our concrete properties. So for this case, we'll use normal weight, 32 MPA concrete um, at 25 kilonewtons per meter cube. Uh, and then here we can set our rebar. So looking at the uh, utilization, it seems that, uh, that it is underutilized and we can clearly optimize for, for a more efficient retaining wall structure. So we can say, uh, instead of using 16s and 16s, we can try N10s. Okay, so that actually doesn't meet the minimum area of, of steel and reinforcement. If we use N10s and space them at 250, we need to be spaced at 200. Um, yeah, so we can use N16 spaced at 300 here, or we can use uh, them spaced at two, N12 spaced at 200. Uh, and similarly here, that's, that's also a possible utilization. So depending on, uh, so depending on the minimum spacing and the bars you have at, on hand, uh, you can optimize for what type of bars you're looking to your rebar layout here. Um, but here we can also optimize the geometry. So this, the length of the heel actually is, is longer than, than the height of the stem. 
So clearly it doesn't need to be that long and we can try and see if 1500, seems like even at 1500, uh, it's still only at 47% utilization. Try that. So at 700, it failed and it's failing in tension. 100, optimized for 900. And it seems that uh, it also, the thickness of the stem and wall also does not need to be this thick. You can see if 300 works, 300. So if we reduce the thickness, we can increase the length of the heel to ensure that it passes. And then we can reduce the stem thickness to 50. So we can optimize clearly for more. Um, but depending on your geometric constraints and, and how much you want to optimize for um, and ensuring that your rebar is still able to fit in the uh, within the wall and wall thickness and stem thickness. Uh, and so this can all, all be optimized and we'll see. So this configuration works for for this for retaining a wall of 1500 millimeters uh, with a with a sufficient factor of safety for bearing, sliding, and overturning. And that's all for this example of designing a L-type cantilever retaining wall.